Hello. What I'd like to do today is revisit a subject that we touched on a few months ago. Uh, it's the CCD versus CMOS debate. We just come back from a trade show and there we met a lot of people on stand. Really good place to meet and have a chat with people. Uh, we had a number of people visiting the stand who had been given the opinion by other vendors and manufacturers that CCD was very much a dead technology and they should be looking at CMOS cameras should they want to buy a camera. Uh, that doesn't really marry up with the, you know, with the opinions that we hold at Attic. Uh, so what I want to do here is just kind of give a more uh, CCD biased view over why CCDs are still very much relevant. And so we've done another uh, video uh, which we can link back to uh, that really touches on both technologies and compares like for uh, hopefully like for like or CCD for CMOS. Uh, but hey, just talking really about CCD at this time, there's the opinion that CCD development is finished. Well, uh, what is finished is that Sony has finished developing CCDs. They did a really good job producing the ICX series and uh, we can carry on buying those until I believe it's 2025. So we've got several years yet of enjoying those sensors. Uh, and then there's, there's always development going on. EMCCD continues to be developed and hopefully one day we'll get to the point of uh, having a photon counting array, which will be very exciting indeed. Uh, and there's CAF, new CAF sensors coming up from OnSemi. Uh, so there's very much, there, there's other companies that are continuing to develop CCD. Uh, should you consider them for astrophotography? Uh, astrophotography is what's known as a stair mode application. So stair mode cameras are cameras that look at a relatively unchanging scene. Frame rate's not important. There's long exposures, typically very faint objects or faint subjects. And we really extend the exposure times to improve the signal to noise ratios. Uh, so yeah, so astrophotography, a typical stair mode application. Uh, we've been involved recently with a couple of NASA grant applications and here we're looking at putting camera and hardware into space. Obviously very, very expensive. Uh, and cost is not limiting when it comes down to the technology. Uh, so in this case, we're choosing CCD is, is obvious, it's a bit of a no brainer. You wouldn't choose uh, CMOS in those applications. Uh, so why is that? Well, for CCD, they have this advantage that every single pixel gets read out and digitized to exactly the same electronics as every other pixel. Uh, in CMOS, uh, there tends to be a number of different ADC converters on the chip itself. Uh, and because there's a number of different ones, you can get some in variation between the converters. CMOS are improving all the time, but still, if you start to average bias frames, you can start to see this effect. So CCD has that advantage that every single pixel gets in, digitized in exactly the same way. And that makes the bias frames very flat and very even. Uh, also, CCD is a very basic technology. There's very few circuits on a chip. And that means that when we go into an exposure mode, we can shut down everything. And basically it just sits there converting photons to electrons in a very, very simple way that generates very, very little dark current. And again, if we compare that with CMOS, we'll typically be generating more dark current. Uh, CMOS chips generally have a lot more circuitry on them. So they're effectively little computers on them. And in order to keep those computers happy, they have to have high speed clocks and lots of voltages being fed into the sensors. Uh, that generates these slightly strange glows that we can see around the edge of some CMOS sensors as these circuits and transistors are kept running throughout the exposure. Uh, and then we have the advantage from the CCD that we can do true analog binning, so adding these pixels together. If I was taking a picture of the sky and I wanted to know what would a five minute exposure look like if I was to take one, uh, I'd just have to do a 20 second exposure at two by two binning. Uh, and then and that would give me the answer. It's lower resolution, but I'd be seeing the same amount of detail. And I might choose there not to do one by one binning images on a faint object at all. I could then use two by two or three by three binning 
to really improve the signal to noise ratio in a way that's not really accessible if we have a CMOS camera. CMOS does have one major advantage and it is much less expensive than CCD. So for the same price, you can get a bigger sensor in a CMOS technology than you can with CCD technology. And obviously cost is always important. We want to get the best price performance out of our cameras. Uh, currently, I think it's around about the thousand euro pound uh, dollar price point. If you can get up to that kind of level, then there are some pretty compelling CCD cameras and CMOS cameras. So we can have things like the Attic Horizon, which is CMOS, or the Attic 414, which is a CCD camera. The Horizon will have a bigger field of view and be able to do live view imaging. The Attic 414 is particularly good at narrowband imaging, and if we're looking at things like planetary nebula, that would probably, and small galaxies, that would probably be the camera of choice out of the two. As we go up in price, then CCD becomes the more compelling choice. If we can start to afford the Attic 460 or the Attic 16200, these are really quite impressive cameras and with some really nice sensors in them. Uh, and at that point, yeah, it probably becomes worthwhile spending a little bit more to get CCD technology, particularly if we're already bought an expensive mount, an expensive telescope. Uh, just consider whether or not we want to spend a little bit more and get some CCD rather than using CMOS. Okay then, I know the whole CCD versus CMOS debate does get a little bit heated from time to time. Uh, this was really to run, redress a little bit of the balance and explain why CCDs should still be considered. I uh, hope that's been interesting. Uh, thank you for watching.